So today we have our Sturmgeschutz 3 Osferung A. So this is said to be the only A variant left in the world. This particular type of vehicle started off uh, in development in 1936. Daimler-Benz were tasked with designing and producing an assault gun to mount the 7.5 centimetre uh, short gun. From there, 1937, uh, we start going into production in what they call the Zero Series. Uh, so Daimler-Benz produced uh, five vehicles in mild steel only on the Panzer III B variant. Uh, so they used that chassis to start off with. We go into 1940, we you know, skip a couple of years, so we get into the A model. So these started from about January right through to June, only producing about 30 models of, the, of this vehicle, so a very short production run. This was allocated to the Stug Abteilung 660. Uh, this was said to have gone in, into the, uh, the Sosha River in the Tula province of uh, Russia. Uh, from there, it's obviously been dug out and then it went through the restoration with the Bush Macau restorations, as we know. The markings are actually different to the, uh, the history of this vehicle. Dmitri's marked it up with uh, Stugab Tolling 192. Um, and we've also got, as you can see, the, uh, the Totemkov markings as well with 2-3. So the Totemkov has been, you can chase that back to Frederick the Great. Um, and obviously then it's been used in German history right up to World War II, uh, especially with the SS as well. And a, particular note, especially with this one, if you can sort of come around this side, and, and it is on both sides, is this armour plate just here. Because the casemate uh, runs straight with the hull, we've got our track guards that come out, but we've got th this on either side. So this was said to be about eight millimetres thick. So this is at about an angle of 30 degrees. But I've thrown the calipers on this one, and it actually comes in at about 10.7 millimetres. So it gives us, I think, just over 12 millimetres of actual uh, protection on this side as well. The other side is fabricated um, as, we, as we go around this side, because um, obviously you're not going to find original stuff for, for everything. And I'll duck around here. So this plate here is, is fabricated, but we also have our sponson here as well, where the uh, FUG uh, number five ra radio would have sat. So this is a HF VHF radio that sat in this part here and with the antenna mount that comes out the side as well. With the casemate itself, with A and B variants only, if we look up through here, we've got this uh, aperture housing and you can see the, the front opening there, which has been closed up. So the A and the B variants only had uh, that opening there. So this is uh, the same siding system that we uh, see on the uh, Jagdpanzer 38, the Hetzer. Uh, so this is the SFL uh, ZF1A site, uh, which is periscopic. Uh, and the commander has his uh, scissor periscopic sights as well that come out out of the top. If we come down, we're looking at the, the driver's two apertures that we can see above there. So in a uh, combat environment, he can actually close his cover and look through those as well. But the only problem is his vision is very narrow uh, to look out through the, the front of the vehicle as well. So he's very reliant on the commander, um, obviously let him know where he, where he can go left and right. We also have the, uh, as per uh, when we talked about the, uh, the F and the G, we have the bolt-on uh, towing hooks. Now with the armour on these, the Stug went uh, straight up to 50 millimetres on the front, uh, 30 on the back, 30 on the sides. So the 50 millimetres on the front was said to be protected against uh, up to two, from two pounder and up to Russian 45. When we start looking at engaging to the sides, it's pretty much vulnerable to the 45 mil anti-tank or armour piercing rounds to the sides. Sturmgeschutz, when we look at uh, the three variant and the four variant, was the most mass produced German vehicle. I think out of all of them, we come in uh, about 11,000 odd, odd vehicles. They're credited with the most amount of kills as well against uh, the Allied armour. So a very good vehicle to start off with in the infantry support role. So this is meant to obviously destroy your uh, entrenched bunkers, infantry and that sort of thing as well. It wasn't a breakthrough vehicle, so it wasn't designed to actually punch through and break through to the enemy lines. That was more what the tanks were designed to do. But for what it was uh, rolled to do initially uh, with that short-barreled 75, uh, very good weapon.